it's not a win, but this is a ground that really caused Arsenal trouble over the years. So how pleased are you to uh, come here and perform like you did and get something out of the game? Uh, mixed emotions, to be honest. Um, I felt like we had the chance there to, to get all the three points. We really, really wanted to get all the all the three points. But uh, in the end, as you say, it's, it's a tough place to come and uh, it was a tough battle out there. So um, two good teams. So I think point maybe was was the fair result. But um, yeah, mixed feelings. Did you cancel each other out? Did, you, did each team show the other a lot of respect tonight? Yeah, I think so. I think um, it's two good teams, you know, um, two tactical teams. Um, and uh, it was a good battle out there. And uh, in the end, was uh, was uh, zero zero. So yeah, you can say that. But um, yeah, I think I felt like we could have won the game also. So um, yeah, but it was a, it was a good battle. How much do you uh, get the credit as a team, especially defensively? Because the two teams, uh, two times you played against City, they only had one shot in each game on target. Yeah, I think the the job we do without the ball is is massive. Um, from the back to the front, you know, um, the distance we cover and uh, how we defend the box and how we track back and um, yeah, how we won the duels today as well. Uh, I think it was brilliant. So um, that was really good. And then with the ball, I felt like we could have done a bit better in in certain moments of the game. We could have kept it a bit more and, and played a bit more, but. Um, but yeah, that's that's how football is. Sometimes you you don't have the best day with the ball, and then you have to make sure you don't don't lose the game. Uh, Liverpool finished today top of the league, but it seems like it's going to be changing throughout. So how are you approaching the games to come? Yeah, it's not not so much that's changed. Um, we have to take it day by day and game by game still, and uh, it's a long way to go and uh, many points to play for. So yeah, we just have to keep pushing each other and uh, and look for the next game. Now that's that's all that matters now. Is that a good point? Yeah. We prefer to win, but we take it. It seemed like a game that was very tight. Two teams going for it. If there was going to be a winner, you had more possession, but just one shot on target. What was missing today? In them, how many shots they had? Two on target. On target? Yes. I don't remember, but maybe it should be. Yeah, but we were there. It's difficult when they are low block with a lot of players there. It's not easy. I spoke to Gareth Barry uh, halfway through the game and he said he thought Arsenal were very clever in the way they fouled to break up the game. Is that just a part of football or do officials need to be a bit stronger? It's not my job. It's not my job to, to decide what they do and the referee what he does. But is it frustrating if, if they're breaking up the game in that manner? No, it's what it is after that. OK, from your point of view, um, I think it's four points from six games now against the rest of the top five. Is that a sign that, that the rest have closed the gap a little bit? Or are, are you, is, there, is there another gear for City to find? Still we are there. In the point of the season, as I come from where I come from, still we are there. So all the games we play with the top, top sides, uh, we play really, really good. Mm. In general, except Arsenal win was not good, Aston Villa neither, but the rest we play really good. Nine games to go, I think three points behind Liverpool now. Realistically, do you have to be perfect if you are to retain this title now? Yeah, definitely. Like we have done in the past. Okay. To win 100 points and 99 and 98 points to win the Premier League is always had to be. So the team performed well. So now it's just recovery mentally, physicality and Wednesday come back. What, what do you say to the players after a game like that? Is how, what do you change or what, what's the message in the dressing room? Oh, how much I love them. They perform who we are. And after sometimes I give credit to the opponent to don't, don't be able to do it, but uh, they are so, so deep, it's not easy. Defend the crosses really well, strong with the players they have. And they are there and they make a really, really good pressing. And after when they break in contact with, a, with our people up front, they have incredible backwards and they defend 10 players in the box. So and always it's, it's difficult to, to find the spaces because they are really good and the spaces are not there. But we were there, we were recognised my team, we tried in, in all the circumstances and that made me feel so proud. Yeah, I suppose sometimes we do ask you the question, what was missing from your team? Is today one of those days where you give credit to Arsenal? No. No, no, I give credit to my team. I hope in Arsenal, Mikel will explain perfectly what, uh, what his opinion. Thanks, Pep. Well, it was a nil-nil draw and pretty uneventful nil-nil draw that we'll be talking about for quite a long time, but the big winners from the weekend's results were Liverpool, for this week at least, to beat Brighton to go two points clear at the top with nine games left to play. It's now three points between the top three and they've now all played each other twice. Aston Villa and Tottenham are three points apart. They both won. Manchester United's draw at Brentford leaves them 11 points off the top four. Newcastle have made up ground on West Ham after beating them in that 4-3 thriller. 
And then at the bottom, it wasn't really good news for any of the teams at the bottom. Burnley and Sheffield United gives them a little bit of hope of, of survival now. But Luton are back into the relegation zone after they lost at Spurs. Nottingham Forest jumped to 17th after their draw with Crystal Palace. And Everton's defeat at Bournemouth means they've now gone a club record equaling 12 games without a win. Chelsea's draw with Burnley keeps them in 11th. And Darren Lewis and Glenn Murray are with us this week as we look back on what it feels like we're kind of a little bit as we were yeah. after this weekend's games, but also we've learned a bit more about all the teams involved and we can't take our eyes off that title race. No. We could take our eyes <clears throat> off the game, to be fair. Not me. And, it, and it's a good <laughs> I'm it's not a taking good my eyes job. off the game. It's a good job that it's not a highlight <laughs> show because it is all about the story rather than about the game itself. So okay, I was... Here's, can, can I just sort out, like, I think this is where we stand. Go on, then. So, it was a boring game. It was an uneventful game. Two, Arsenal have shown that they are both more mature and defensively stronger than they were at this stage last season. And three, Manchester City are more vulnerable than they were at this stage in previous title campaigns. Mm -hmm. Not the one that they, they lost in, in 2020, because they were way behind in that one. But where they've been in it, they feel more vulnerable than, than they have been. All of those things can be true at once. I love the fact that he's like, I don't care, we did lose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I don't think that's significant. Yeah. But equally, it might not be enough. You know, yeah, but, yeah, four but points off Manchester City is great. Yeah. yeah, but... Winning at home, drawing away, you can't really ask for too much more than no, that. And no. yet, it might not be but then enough. I, I don't, I'm not, then I'm not sure what um, people expected us to go to Manchester City and it's do not, that. It's not criticism of no, that. No, 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 I'm just trying to ex yeah, explain, yeah. Kills, that... You're going to go to a Manchester City side that it's very difficult to beat them there anyway. Mikel's already said that he's, 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 you know, every game is different. He's gone to Manchester City and he's tried to make sure that he negates them in the places where they hurt Arsenal. Obviously, people continually still speaking about last year and, you know, the mentality wasn't strong enough, couldn't manage the game and they got beaten. And this game, I thought the defending um, and the way they played the game, obviously, Aki should have scored that chance. I thought that for Arsenal fans in particular, of course, people are saying it wasn't a great game. That was an amazing game for Arsenal in the way that they've got through that game it's and weird, what they had to do to get through right. that game. I, there was a nil-nil that I, I remember that you played in for England. And there, there are significant nil-nils, yeah. aren't there? In Rome. In the, the, and and I, obviously the significance of that game was different to this one. But you're up against a side that is technically outstanding, mm -hmm. they're consistent, they come alive this stage of the season, and they've got so many points of attack. Defending as well as they did, full backs dropping back, the wide players tucking in, everyone basically switched on and doing their duty. Sometimes you have to say we can swallow that mm. because maybe we can pinch points. You know what, as well, then, Glenn, before you go, I'm listening to Martin Erdogan, we interviewed Martin Erdogan afterwards, and he was very disappointed with the way it went because he says, He's got mixed feelings. Obviously, they're delighted with the point, but he maybe think that they could have done more attacking-wise. But in the end, the one point at City has got to be unbelievable at this stage of the season. See, I thought it was probably the perfect performance. And yeah, it, was, it wasn't the build, what we expected, mm. the goals. It was a purist performance. It was a tactical performance that, that some people will have enjoyed. It was enjoyed. engrossing. <laughs> <laughs> some will get that, Kelly. But no, yeah. for me, they, the tactics of Mikel Arteta were perfect to go up Man City, shut them out, and it all boiled down to that point at the end mm. where Trossard had it down the left-hand side and he could have found Martinelli. And that, that is why you play that way, way isn't it, mm. right? You've set up a certain way for mm. that moment right at the end and they just didn't Might, quite have yeah. that killer instinct. But mm. I think it shows how far they've come on that Odegaard's disappointed mm. with walking out there with the draw. Yeah, and the thing is, it does come down to fine margins when you're, you're playing in, in that way. It came down to fine margins for Manchester City as well. And Erling Haaland has come in for a, a bit of criticism for his all-round performance. But we know that you know, his numbers are very rarely brilliant for a whole game. But in moments like this, yeah. he normally comes alive. And this is where we see the best of Haaland. But he just he doesn't even make contact with, you know the, with this, the ball. This is really harsh. Um, on him simply because of what he's trying, where he is, trying to cut it back. You know, that was, it, that was probably the problem, right? That, he's, he's, yeah. he's trying to cut <laughs> it back. Kells, that's the, the only thing I've problem I've got with him because the only thing I'm only thing I'm thinking about there is there's a lot of goal over there. 
There's a lot of goal over there. I know he's coming across you fast. He's trying to get himself around it. But the way he's tried to cut it back, he's got his foot in an awkward position. You're better off just putting your foot through it over there. But this is the only thing I was surprised is with. Is he caught between trying to shoot and thinking I, there's a player in a centre-forward position yeah, that I could cut the ball back? I think he is. I don't know what, I don't know what you, you think with that one, Glenn, because it seems like such a strange miss. And it wasn't the miss. It's the decision to... When you look at it, it's decision... When he's coming onto that, I'm just going to half-folly that straight through the keeper. I can't understand why he's trying... The, the, Who is the that? Is that is Ruben Diaz? Difficult. Yeah. I'm saying he's got the pass to what he's trying to do is more difficult than trying to get it through... Just through the keeper. I, I think it's just the way he's calibrated, isn't it? He mm. wants to score goals. He doesn't want to create. Mm. That is, is, and that's what makes him a killer. Mm. But I think the criticism that he's coming for is unnecessary right here. Well, it depends on... It depends <laughs> how, much, how far it <laughs> well, can travel. Because it has travelled, doesn't we, it? We'll talk about Because we've got two strikers with us today. Yeah. So it, it, it's... Totally, but yeah. Let's just establish both of your credentials. Mm -hmm. Because you did ask us a few weeks ago to find more misses. Yes, please, yeah. So we, <laughs> I need to be brought down so to we've, earth. So we've man. got as close <laughs> <laughs> to the eclipse. Jesus. It's not, it's not quite you a miss, but really we, did <laughs> miss the, we did want to see... Girls, the, this was as close as we could get to you doing what Erling Haaland Oh, Harland my <laughs> God. All of a sudden, I'm really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> because Goodness. the thing is, Glenn, we do tend to try and be nice to our guests, but we like to make sure that... See how harsh that is, Glenn? That's harsh. You see, but what's good about ours there, Glenn? I nearly bundled it in. <laughs> <laughs> nearly got that. What's good about it is that they have to search. What that, my one was just... What are you for? <laughs> Ooh. I didn't know what was wrong with it, to be honest. Why was that not a goal? <laughs> Where was VAR when you needed it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you haven't got that. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> That's in the moment. Like, for me, even, yeah. again, um, with Erlen Haaland's one, I'm not thinking of anything other than trying to get it through the keeper. Even with that miss, I'm not looking at anything other than trying to get a clean volley on it. Mm. And I think that when you get into that situation, like you see Erlen Ireland, even with Glenn's one, he's not in two minds about what he wanted to do. It's just the timing of it went, went wrong. And my, my, my problem with Erlen Ireland there is that in such a place of, of such importance and somebody who's so good that he, he was in two minds. It, that was what I was more confused with. I, I think it boiled down to Gabriel and Saliba. They'd roughed him up all mm -hmm. game. They'd made it a physical battle. And I think that he'd just taken his eye off, off the ball almost because he, be, he, he was more engrossed in fighting those two, whereas normally he's physically dominant, whoever he plays against. Mm. All of a sudden, he's come up against two athletes that have bullied him all afternoon, and the frustration just got the better of him. See, the, mm. the, the numbers are quite low. Six touches in the box, 23 touches in the game, and it's the lowest of any of the players who started. But, but what that's, ha that's normal exactly. for Haaland. Exactly. Normally, at the end of that list of stats, you get goals yeah. and three. I think, <laughs> and that's the, the, that's I the think difference. I saw somewhere, like, against Nottingham Forest, just quickly, I think he had 11 touches. He scored a hat-trick. Right. And, and, and what he's done, that, mm. that, the, both those examples show us in newspapers not to jump to conclusions about him because he embarrasses us. Every time we say, oh, my goodness, he only had a limited number of touches on the ball, and then there were big pieces. Is this the end of Erling Haaland? And as you said, next game, there's a three. Mm. And he's got a hat-trick. So I, I, think, I think maybe to, the, there is no room to criticise Erling Haaland mm. when he's posting the numbers that, that he posted last season mm. and, and for the vast majority of, of this season. But there are conversations about the rest of his play. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any... There's, there's absolutely no question about his, his finishing. Mm -hmm. But there may be, if there are slight criticisms, are around the, the rest of his... The rest of his his play well, and and also in in terms of his style because yeah. it isn't a particularly elegant way of playing playing football. I well, think that's where the, the questions these come. these guys are the experts. I just yeah. want to throw in something. Mm. First of all, I fell in love with football watching the nineteen eighty two Brazil team um, and they were they were superb all over the pitch, stroked the ball around, uh, and at the World Cup you, you, I just sat in awe mm. watching them. But they were undone by Paolo Rossi, mm -hmm. who did nothing else in the game mm. but hit a hat-trick, brilliant hat-trick, highest level. And it made me believe from that point on, I pay, I pay, I, I, I want my striker to score goals. Mm. I know you can do other things in other areas of the pitch, hold the ball up, do that and do that. But Emil Heskey has never had the credit he deserves mm. because he didn't score any, as many goals as Michael Owen. So what do you want from a striker? Mm. Van Nistelrooy didn't do that much outside the box, but inside the box, he was a killer. Mm. And so for me, watching, and obviously I defer to the guys, mm. but, but for me watching, I'm thinking, what do I want from a guy that I pay particularly a lot of money for? 
do I want him to be a killer in the book? So do I want him to lay balls off and provide opportunities for people who not, might not actually be as good as him mm -hmm. in the box? I think I want the former. Yeah, so is the criticism about something that he shouldn't be expected to be doing anyway? So the criticism is, well, Harling doesn't... Harling doesn't... Do, Harling, I'm going to double, double barrel. <laughs> Portmanteauing his name. Mm. Um, if, is the criticism of Erling Harland that he's not doing something that we know he doesn't do, but that he's not there for anyway? <laughs> Well, firstly, I don't think it's justified. I think you've got to give credit to Arsenal. He had no space at all to manoeuvre in yesterday. Absolutely zero space. He was always within touch and distance of two defenders. And he's not that guy that's going to get it down. He's going to dribble. He's going to go past a couple of people and bend it in the top corner. That is just not him. That is not the reason why you bought him. I think there are aspects of his game. I think his movement is exceptional when he's got space to move into. Yes, with his back to goal, it could get better, but that will come with age, won't it? Yes, absolutely. I think people have got... He's 23, right? Yeah. Um, we're seeing a goal-scoring phenomenon in what he's done since he's come onto the scene. He's still learning the game as a striker. Yeah. The thing that superseded everything is the amount of goals he's scoring, so you kind of, like, default to the greatness and not realise that the work is still happening. Like, I, I heard the criticism of his link-up play and his hold-up play. Now, I, I remember last season, even... He, he, he's brilliant link-up play when he was really being out-muscled by either Gabriel or Saliba. In fact, it was holding. It was Rob holding. So he's probably kind of bullied him a bit. But it was the ball that came into him, Glenn, from a great height. He linked it, bam, put Kevin De Bruyne in, he went and scored. This is something he's probably working on, but the criticism why I feel is unfair is because they're not taking into consideration his age, and where he is, simply because of the amount of goals he's scored. You, right. He's still learning the game. But, but the significance of this is normally you would say it's from us guys, us journalists, us newspapers or uh, websites or whatever else. But the criticism this time is coming from fellow pros. Mm -hmm. And that's quite significant because they're assessing yeah. the game in a way that I you I think what they're looking the at, and, and if you're talking about the fellow pros, it's probably of my generation, older, who a centre forward has to hold the ball, he has to link the play. Talking about a different style of centre forward now. Erlen Haaland is on the shoulder. He does want to attack the space, you know, especially if it's a high line. He doesn't really want the ball in and around to feet with people around him because, like Glenn rightly said, when you've got that kind of physicality behind you and then and, and, and players in front of you, then you don't want the ball in and around there. You want it where your strength is. Mm -hmm. And that's up to Man City to do that because what then happens is you get him in a situation where he has to, he's running onto it. We see what he does. This is a part of his game he's probably going to have to learn a little bit about simply because you're going to get into situations where you're going to have to make sure, Glenn, as you all know, that I keep it here, doom, bam. Those things have to happen. But at the moment, I think the, crit the criticism is a bit harsh. But yeah. It's also interesting that he's a Pep Guardiola player. That's what I think is, is, is because you're kind of looking at him within the context of well, that he's, city he's... where everybody is. And all those attributes that you're asking from, from Erling Haaland and that sort of, you know, that, that sort of level of technicality... It, it's something that is a is a prerequisite for the for the rest of the team. Yeah, I think that's where it it's yeah it looks different it, because he is mm. he's the anomaly in that team, isn't he? He's the one that is not going to technically break you down. He's the one that is going to batter the door down mm. more often than not. For me, I, I think I think it, it's pretty interesting. I, th I think mm. it's unfair. I, I, his age is is a massive thing, mm. and he we very we, we're reactive. Mm. And because of his goals, we praise him, and, and rightfully so. But he has one bad afternoon, and he's like been referred to as a League Two player. I mean, it's just it's, yeah. it's but do you incredible. Know what? If, we'd had, if we'd had this game a couple of seasons ago, we would have said that's Manchester City. <laughs> but what, <laughs> no, what, I'll tell you what they really need. Mm. One thing I will say, it speaks volumes when he's got Alvarez on the bench, who's exceptional yeah. World Cup winner, and Pep Guardiola still felt the need not to bring him off because. He's always got a moment in him that can mm. change a game. Yeah. And I would hate to, if I'm Ireland, I wouldn't want to be taken off against Saliba and Gabriel because there's a, <clears throat> there's a little bit of conversation building around the fact that, oh, he can't do it against them two. Mm. So I want to be on there. I don't want to be taken off so as they, they've kind of won. Because yeah. as a centre forward, you think, oh, didn't even put a, lay a glove on them. But even, even you were saying, you know, that <laughs> when it was Rob holding up against yeah. Erling Haaland, Haaland has the kind of maybe yeah. the better of him yeah. physically. But even in terms of the way that, that Gabriel in particular was like verbally into yeah. Haaland yeah. throughout this game as well, yeah, it, it, that was just such an interesting thing yeah. to watch because, as you said, he's been so physically, physically dominant. Well, the thing is, is that he, that's what he's going to He's going to track that and it's going to be up to Erling Haaland. To deal with that kind of um, that kind of like intimidation, yeah. 
and make sure that you do play yourself into the game when the ball comes into a stage where, OK, I'm not running on to goal, but I've got to make sure that I let him know that if he overcommits himself, I'm going to beat him. You have to beat them in that way mentally, because at the moment, you see, yes, they're going to hug and it's yeah. all great. But deep down, Gabriel believes he's got him. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, yeah, Saliba yeah. believes well, he he's got he had him. He had him now up to Haaland, like I said, at 23, to learn that those aspects of his game where he's going to be able to throw it back on that, that centre forward to say, listen, I know we've got the same physicality, same pace, but you know I'm bringing it today. Right, you can't right. when, be weak when, in the when game. When you, when you first came to the Premier League, and you, you, there were lots of times where you get involved in rows like yeah. that. Really? You, <laughs> you're out of order, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn's out of order, everybody. I didn't want to say, but... <laughs> <laughs> so do you go away and you think, right, next time I'm out? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's not a case of next, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and hurt him. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make sure... George Graham used to say, your centre, look at his centre-half, he doesn't have to clean his kit or something. I wanted to make sure that centre-half would always have been in a game. Even if I've missed a chance, he's in a game at the time when you could tackle centre, tackle centre halves and make sure that you rough them up. Don't make them feel comfortable. Mm. Don't make them come over you and head it. Make sure it's hard for them. So as you're always a problem. What was that? That one. So when they're trying to come <laughs> over me, Glenn, when they're trying to come over me, making myself bigger. So it's never like they're coming bam like yeah. this. Yeah. Always being a nuisance to them. So as they, you want people to say, I, I don't like playing against him. But I'm just thinking, but for the two of you, it must be so. The defender's got you in his pocket, and then after the game, he's giving you a little bit of that. As yes. Well, and you're thinking yeah. to yourself. Yeah. My, yeah. my, my favourite was is when you know he's coming, he's coming, and you just bend over, let him go right over. Let him go yeah. right over, yes. <laughs> and they don't come <laughs> again, do they? <laughs> no, they don't, no. But the main thing with that is. Harry Kane and, likes that one. Yeah, <clears throat> but the main thing with that is, and Glenn you know, can agree, is I don't mind if a, if a defender's playing, like a, someone like a Des Walker back in the time would mark me out of the game, but I, he knew that I'm only waiting for a half a chance. And as the strikers, I don't care what he says to me, and I don't care how much he has me in his pocket for the game. If I could score that half a chance, he's never, ever going to be comfortable no matter whatever game you play against him. And that is what you've got to try yeah, and get. You've, you've won the battle. Exactly. And it and that's what, takes a moment for us. Exactly. It takes a moment for us. They've got to do it for 90 minutes and more. Haaland has that in his favour as long as he's ready for that, because that's the next, um, for me, the next transition that, in this game. that is something you get better with with age Absolutely. as well, Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. In other words, we have to wait for season three. Maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, the season three is never great, but, like, you know, Ricky Gervais done it. Ricky <laughs> Gervais done it. <laughs> but, look, the, the other thing that, that that particular battle highlights as well is, is what we sort of started off by saying, that we learned about Arsenal in this, this title run-in, which is their resilience, their mentality, their toughness defensively. And I know we showed Gabriel there up against Haaland, but... Having Saliba there has been huge. And we talked about this so much at the end of, of last season and it was kind of dismissed by, by a lot of people, the importance of having Saliba mm. in that side and, and fit and the difference that that's going to make for Arsenal in these final mm. nine games of the season where he, he, wasn't, yeah, he wasn't there, there for a large there. part of it last season. <laughs> and I think one of the other things what was a real massive miss um, for Arsenal when Saliba <clears throat> excuse me, got injured in that Sporting Lisbon game was Tom Yassi got injured in the game as well. So then Ben White probably goes to, 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 to centre half when we see we had to deal with, we had to use Rob, Rob Holding the last time and he was a, a massive drop off um, for us. And then Tom, Tom Yassi would probably play right. It might have, it's not going to give us Saliba, but it's going to keep that right side, which really lost a lot, getting the ball to Erdogan, getting the ball to Saka when we lost Saliba. But now, obviously, with Saliba and the fact that he can defend so high, him and Gabriel, they're so comfortable. And this is where Arsenal can press people in. They can keep them in there because they know the, co the confidence there. trust, there. isn't it? Absolute trust, One, yeah. one, one centre-back can go and you can leave mm. the other centre out half isolated with, with, with what? Exactly. I mean, he was left sometimes yesterday with just Haaland. Yeah. Him. Would you do that at Rob Holding or would you change Absolutely your whole not. way you play? And that's, I mean, that, that's harsh on Rob Holding, but ultimately that is the truth, could, isn't it? You've got all that trust right yeah. got your back. You, can, you cannot do that with Rob but you can do that. You can actually... For want of a better word, you can take liberties when you've got a, a, a centre half as good as Saliba and Gabriel because they both complement each other. Because you can leave them one on one, two on two. It's like you, you see it with somebody like um, Vidic and Vidic and Ferdinand were like they could easily have a two on two, and, and then you could push the team in. And that is what Arsenal are doing now. What was good about Arsenal yesterday is everybody having to be right. So deep Saka was. You saw how deep um, Trossard was. To, to make sure that they kept those gaps um, t t uh, limited to City, 
The only thing was they didn't, they weren't able to break and, and punish them, which they should have done. Well, I suppose they can't be in two places on the Absolutely pitch, can not, they? No. So it's kind of, no. and then this when is why they Martinelli do get was there, such a miss. But when they yeah. when they do get mm. forward, mm. they they've run a long way to be safe. there. Exactly, as well. and I think what they've learned as well is that you you have to take the chances. Everybody knows that against City, you have to take the chances if you don't do that, and that is could have done yesterday. Um, is take the chance and beat them, which would have been amazing because for confidence and momentum. Knowing that, yes, we were under it for so long, Arsenal, but we were still able to cause them a problem. Yeah. So if we, we go back to where we, we started talking about, which was it wasn't the most exciting of games, no. but intriguing uh, in, its, in its own way for the, for the purists. <laughs> um, also, Arsenal's maturity, their, their defensive improvement, their, their improvement in their, in their mentality, their strength mm. in their mentality, that City maybe aren't quite... Thing. Where they have been when they they've been at their their you know, it's still city isn't it? So when we're talking about a tiny drop off at one yeah. percent or whatever it is, but but also the fact that Arsenal a draw for them might be the exactly the right way to approach it. A point away to Manchester City might be a great result over the mm. course of a season, but even taking four points off City across the course of a season, it might just be not quite enough because they still find themselves two points off the, the league leaders who we'll, we'll talk about in a, in a second. We'll talk about Liverpool in a minute. But they've done brilliantly against Liverpool. They've done brilliantly against City. And yet it still might not be enough. Yeah, that little mini league between the top three sides, they've got eight points and so Liverpool and City have got three. And even in the top five, you can, mm. you can widen it out to the, to the top five as well. Bear in mind, all of the three title challengers have to play both Tottenham and Villa mm. between now and the end of the season. And I think both those sides are going to be dangerous opponents because Tottenham are able to score. Villa yep. at home are very strong. And they're playing um, for something. And they're yes. both playing for a Champions mm -hmm. League place as well, absolutely. So I, I think there is so much jeopardy left in the remainder yeah. of the yeah. season. What I would say about Arsenal is yesterday, and, and the, the season as a whole has been a big psychological win for them because they've convinced us in, in, in who assess games in media that it can be done. Two seasons ago, people would have thought Tot, uh, Arsenal were a, a side maybe playing for a place in the mm. top four. Over the course of two seasons, they're serious contenders to win the league. I look at that back line and it reminds me a lot of the way that Pep Guardiola changed up his defence. You know, you had he went, Cancelo mm. came in, he went, yeah. you know, the, lots of mixing, matching, chopping, chain, until he got the right formula. Mm. And now it looks as though Arsenal have got the right formula in defence because theirs is the best in the Premier League. Mm. They've got the best attack. They scored the most goals from set pieces. They scored the most goals from corners. Mm. They're doing such a fabulous job. And when you're there at press conferences, you don't see anxiety. And when you talk to people in and around it, you don't see worry. You see that a lot of serenity yeah. around yes. the club because yeah. mm -hmm. the they believe that they should yeah. be there yeah. and that they can stay there. So having made such a, a great case for, for Arsenal, we know what Manchester City are, are capable of over the course of, of many seasons now. So why then, with it being so tight, there's only three points between those sides, why are Opta predicting that Liverpool have an almost one in two chance mm. Of, of winning the, the Premier League. Does that does that feel right to you or does it I feel think closer? Each of the top two teams have done it before. The surprise for me is, is City because City have basically won five of the last six. Mm. And City remind me a lot of Manchester United post Sir Alex Ferguson. And, and by that, I mean, there came a point where Fergie time was burned into our memories. If they mm. were behind with 89 minutes to go, you still believe they could find a goal from somewhere because they've done it so many times over the preceding two decades. And now there is this belief that, well, they're City, aren't they? Mm. So we don't assess the technical yeah. elements of yeah. it. We just say, well, they're City. They know how to find a way to win. And that's why they're still in that conversation. But Liverpool have got the best attack. They still don't have their best striker playing at the moment, Jota. Mm. When he comes back, they'll have even more. They've got so much depth with the young players coming through as well. And their top now, they look to have, to me, the easiest running of the lot. But of course, there is no such thing as an easy running when you get to this stage. Right, Lee, mm. here's one for you. Go on. So, if you do fall short this year, next year, mm. I, I personally don't think City are as strong as what they were last year right. with losing Gundogan and yes. Mahrez and things. Liverpool losing the manager at the end of the year. Mm. Do you think that Arsenal would start the season next year favourites? Well, they're definitely one of them, easily. Absolutely, with the progression that they're... Um, yeah, because they are... They're, we can yeah, all see them they're yeah, getting better see the, better. Yeah, you, you, you have to say that if they don't do it, you, you've got to say that the, the, what they've done the two previous seasons, too, the, the one what we're coming up to, 
you have to say that they are what eat one of the favourites. They will be. I think they will be. Um, like you say, City this season, because of how good they are, of course they're amongst it. Liverpool with the injuries and their experience, and you look where Liverpool are now, <clears throat> and you have to say it's unbelievable. You know, still haven't got their number one goalkeeper. You know, you, we're still playing like they I know it was against Brighton, but you've got someone like Virgil, marshalling Bradley and Kwanzaa and the young player, Endo coming in. Now we're seeing McAllister playing the kind of football that we saw him play while they bought him off for of Brighton. And obviously up front, they're so unpredictable and they can score that they're in a position now, Liverpool, where, you know, like we said, they know what to do here. But at the same time, you know, it, it, listening to Pep say it's in their hands, it's because they're top. If Liverpool well, it isn't, win, it is yeah. in their hands. It's, That's yeah, true. Yeah, it's in well, their hands, yeah. of course. But at the same time, I don't think any of the the runnings are going to be easier. No, I don't. Well, think listen, any of them keep are. your powder dry on Liverpool for yes. now because we. I'm Derek Ray. I'm joined for commentary by former Arsenal fullback Lee Dixon, and without doubt, a match with the potential to bring genuine excitement. It's Luton Town taking on Chelsea. Hi, Derek, thank you. Well, both managers will be reminding their players how important... Well, it could be on for him here. Is it going to be? Keeper getting the touch. And it's gone behind for the corner. Over it comes. He did his job defensively. And they'll get ready for the throw-in. Pearson so after that a goal kick it'll be well pick your adjective where Hakim Ziyech is concerned explosive I think might be in a pro can they take the lead here and mistimed the run sadly that's offside Throw-ins given. This looks promising. Well, it's the care and attention. All that works. And a blunder by the keeper. Werner. Promising attack, but his timing was off. Well, they've lost possession of the ball. Nicely cut out. Oh, that's an interesting pass. Ziyech. In it goes. An early goal. No wonder they're celebrating. Well, as we look at this again, the keeper's every right to ask where his back line was, but 2v1 in the end, he's thinking now, is he going to pass or go round me? He's got no chance. Well, real difficulty keeping the ball. Ball's gone. 